What's up, noobs? Real estate development has a ton of moving parts. You have to find and underwrite deals, find investors, get loans, conceptualize projects, hire and manage huge teams, manage money, manage schedules, manage sales, maybe even manage the building after it's done. But there's one thing that absolutely drives me nuts every single time. Real estate development has a chicken or the egg problem. If you found a deal that you like and you decide to bid on it, sometimes you have to provide proof of funds. But if you're doing a single institutional deal, as in not part of a portfolio or a large fund, you have to raise those funds based on the deal. In order to raise those funds, you need to have a pretty solid business plan, which will include things like initial proposed floor plans, zoning studies, opinion letters from the DOB, a detailed pro forma, a proposed construction schedule, bids from GCs, and a brokerage or management agreement. Then you have to shop the deal around to investors and banks. And if you secure an investor in a loan, you have to start putting tons of legal agreements together, at which point you can finally get your proof of funds and you can go into contract. So in a nutshell, the chicken or egg problem is that you may have to do half the work on the project just to get your bid accepted and go into contract. And you still might not even close. I've seen a fair share of deals blow up before closing and it wastes a ton of time and money. If you're an aspiring real estate noob, be aware that the chicken or egg problem is just part of the industry. You can be better prepared for it by developing investor and banking relationships before you bid on deals. And you can establish that you only do certain deal types and specific asset classes with minimum return hurdles. But guess what? That leads to a bigger chicken or egg problem because you need to have a track record of having successfully done these deals to establish that you can deliver on those criteria. Otherwise, investors and banks may not even talk to you. Don't worry, this isn't just a pure rant. I do have some advice. Best way to avoid this problem? Don't do real estate development. Leave more deals for me. Oh, you want real advice? Fine. You can avoid needing to look for investors by just starting small. And if you have enough cash, you can even avoid needing a bank and you totally sidestep the problem. You can also seek a JV partner that has these relationships established already, but you'll have to bring something to the table that they may not have in order for the partnership to make sense. And if you can't avoid it, you can optimize on it. Developers look at hundreds of deals and I track a number of metrics in our deal funnel. Come to my computer and I'll show you some sample metrics. All right, so let's say we set a goal for ourselves to find a deal within two months. The first step of our deal funnel is to find out how many setups we can receive through different methods that we try to get deals. For those that don't know, a setup is what we call the brochure for a property listing. It basically sets up what you can do with a deal. So in this example, we have three different methods. One is to find new brokers. The next is to just browse listings ourselves on listing sites. And the third is to nudge our existing broker connections and just remind them of what we're looking for. And every step of the way, we can figure out metrics to see how long each step takes us. So for example, in the first method where we're contacting new brokers, we'll take a look at how many brokers we can connect with. So here I'm assuming 15 and how many setups each new broker will send to us after we brief them, leading to a total of 45 new setups from brokers. When you meet new brokers, a lot of the times they're gonna wanna call you and have a chat figure out what you're looking for, what you're about, vet out whether you're serious, and vice versa. We wanna figure out if they are capable of delivering on what we're looking for and if they have the specialty and expertise in the neighborhoods and the asset class. So leave about 20 minutes for an initial phone call with a broker to go over exactly what you're looking for. So if you take that time you spend for meeting each broker and multiply it by the number of new brokers you expect to meet, over here we expect to spend five hours meeting new brokers. If you get 45 total setups across the five hours, then you've spent about seven minutes per setup. Now the next method is just setups from browsing listings manually yourself. And there's a few sites that do that at the institutional level. You'll find a lot more sites that do it at the single family home level. But suppose you will find 200 setups from browsing. And let's say over the course of two months, you spend 50 hours browsing. So a few hours a week here and there, and it, it'll average out to about 15 minutes per setup. So in this case, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more inefficient based on our initial estimates. And the third method is just to tap into your existing connections with brokers and just give them nudges. So either email, text, or call them. And again, they'll probably message you back, give you a call see how you're doing. So leave about 15 minutes to catch up with those brokers and just update them, remind them what you're looking for, 
And if you have a good relationship with them and they're familiar with what you do and what you're looking for, you won't have to spend as much time and maybe they'll have a deal and they just haven't talked to you in a while and they'll send you, let's say, two setups per nudge. So if you've got a pool of 20 existing brokers that you know, maybe they'll send you 40 setups on average and maybe it'll take you about eight minutes per setup. All right, so if you add all these up, total time invested in step one is 60 hours, 12.6 minutes per setup, and we can expect maybe 285 setups. So that's a lot of leads. Now going a little further down, the first pass evaluation. In our experience, we can look at a lot of deals and depending on how well the brokers understand what you're looking for and whether they're really custom tailoring the setups that they're sending you or if they're just spamming you with anything they get and just putting you on their mailing list, your conversion rate can be pretty low. If you're just sourcing in volume, you're gonna have extremely low conversion rate. So we put 5% here. So out of the 285 setups, 5% of those are viable, which leads to 14 possible viable deals after our first pass. And the first pass really involves just entering in the basic information like the lot size and the amount of square footage, amount of buildable square footage, our estimates of how much the work will cost. It should take about 15 minutes per property max. So total time invested, if you're gonna be spending 15 minutes across 285 setups, that's gonna take you 71 hours. But again, this is data entry work. You can have interns do this for you. And total time invested per viable lead is five hours. So in this example, it's not great. And there's a number of things you can do in step one to make the time spent per viable lead go down in step two. Because if you really make your brokers understand what you're looking for and draw a line in the sand and say, do not send us deals that don't match these criteria, you're gonna end up getting fewer deals, but you're gonna get higher quality deals that pass your minimum criteria. So your first pass evaluation conversion percentage, which we have at 5%, could possibly go up, leading to more viable deals and less setups that you have to go through. Now on our step three, if you look through all these setups and 14 of them are viable, then these are 14 deals that pass your minimum criteria and you wanna dive in deeper. So this means, okay, let's call the broker. I wanna go visit the site. I wanna take photos. I wanna make a detailed pro forma. And then if there's anything wrong after the site visit, you gotta go check the zoning regulations. Maybe you gotta call your architect. There's always problems, so expect it. So in our step three, we have three hours per site visit that accounts for the round trip, getting there, walking through the site for about an hour, getting back. And then if you've got a great template for your pro forma, and if you do the same type of deal every time, you only have to build it once. But if each deal is a little bit different, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. So I put in a full work day there. So eight hours should allow you to customize any aspect aspects of the deal to your pro forma. So looking at the total time spent on this pass, you're gonna be spending three hours to visit the sites, eight hours to put your pro forma together, two hours to call your architect and figure out how to handle problems. So multiply that by the number of viable leads in your second step and you have 185 hours you're gonna be spending on second pass deals. And maybe after doing all that, you realize that only 30% of these deals actually are viable for you. And so in this case, uh, it rounds to four viable deals. So the total time invested in each viable deal at this point is 46 hours, which leads us to step four. So now you've got four deals that you want to find investors for and you want to follow through on. You got to put together your full OM. That's your offering memorandum. I put 24 hours per deal on this one. We do have an OM template. We have a handful of investors in our investor pool over here. I just put eight as an example. Investors can sometimes want to see things presented in different ways. So assume that you have to put together your full OM and your financials. I put 24 hours for that because at this point everything is very customized to the deal and you have to show uh, things about the neighborhood, things about the property, start putting initial floor plan sketches together. So it all takes quite a bit of time. I assume here three full work days will get you something that you can start shopping around to investors. Once you have that ready, you're gonna have to give your investors a call and spend about an hour on each of them to walk them through the deals and see if they're interested in each. If you got four deals, that's only 15 minutes per deal. So it's really not that much time. After all that, what you're aiming for here is to get one deal funded because your investors, even if they like all four deals, you're probably looking in the range where they can only fund one. So just assume that you have the capacity to do one. That was your goal to find one in two months. So let's see how much time this step takes. Across four deals, 24 hours per deal, it's gonna take you 96 hours. 
Then you get to spend eight hours pitching to your eight investors that you already have. So overall, between putting together the OMs and the pitching, you spend 104 hours. That means across all four steps, the net time you invested to find one funded project is 421 hours. And one metric to see if you're being efficient about it, if you've got a full-time employee that's an analyst that specifically looks for deals, and if you set a goal for yourself for two months, 421 hours is actually a full-time employee for 2.4 months. So we're not being efficient enough in our funnel. So that's where we have to go back to the previous steps and see where we can be a little bit more efficient. So maybe we can look at 200 setups across two months and it'll only take us 10 hours. In which case, that's super efficient. We only spend three minutes for each setup. This is probably more in line with what I would spend on finding setups on my own because they're readily available and you can usually filter through sites like Cushman and Wakefield and you'll pretty much know right away when you see these things whether they're viable or not. However, I wouldn't say I would find 200 setups because at any given time, there's very few deals out there that meet specific criteria. And if you're gonna have wider criteria, you're gonna have to have a more flexible pro forma template. And that's going to take a lot more time in your step three evaluation when you have to make your detailed pro forma because you're going to have to have all these different types of templates for all these different types of deals. So it is a little bit of give and take. You have to figure out how many setups you really want to look for and how wide of a net you want to cast. But you also have to balance out the time that you want to spend looking for these things because really if you set that goal for two months, aim for it and tweak your metrics so that you don't overrun. So you don't want to get into month three and still not have a project and you're just burning through your cash and you're just not hitting your goals. Again, these are just example metrics. You can tailor your own metrics to whatever methods that you use to find setups. And you want to set this up in a way that you can track the metrics uh, and understand where your inefficiencies lie. Because at the end of the day, the point of this is to make sure you hit your goals and you're faster and more efficient about it each time. And this is really a methodical approach that allows you to address the chicken or egg problem because if you've got to the point where you found a deal and you found an investor, you can provide the proof of funds and you don't have to be scrambling in order to find an investor after your bid is accepted. That way you can move on to the next steps, which is working on the legal agreements in order to get to closing. All right, time for another rule. Today, I recommend Winner Takes All by Christina Bingley. It's about three titans of real estate that shaped the Las Vegas Strip. Two of these guys had phenomenal instinct, Kirk Kerkorian and Steve Wynn. And one of them used math and statistics to extract small amounts of money from huge numbers of casino goers, Gary Loveman. Despite their contrast in styles, they were all amazing deal makers. Stay curious, noobs.